When things are going wrong in our lives, we tend to always want to blame something external. So we tend to want to say that someone did this to me or someone must have put this on me, someone put a spell on me, someone put the evil eye on me, you know, someone possessed me and so on and so forth. And obviously that's, that's going way too far and that's exaggerating and so on and so forth. But is there such thing as a jinn actually possessing a human being, a human being actually being possessed by a jinn? It does exist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He affirms this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, describing the people who engage in usury, in riba, in interest, that they would stand on the day of judgment, just like the one who is, who is possessed and who's overtaken and being beaten on the inside and so on and so forth by the shayateen. So a person who's possessed by the jinn. By Allah saying that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is acknowledging that there are some people that can actually be possessed by the jinn. And in a way, uh, all of us have to deal with al qareen as we said. We all have to deal with the one that's constantly whispering in us. And in a way, we're all possessed to an extent. Because the Prophet says, Inna shaytan yajri min ibn adam dam, That shaytan flows through the blood of the son of Adam or flows through his veins the way that blood Blood flows through his veins, meaning you're always dealing with this to an extent. However, again, you're keeping it under control by keeping your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing the things that bring about protection in your life and so on and so forth. Now, it's important for us to find a middle ground here. Anyone that has actually dealt with people physically, and I don't, you don't deal with people physically through watching YouTube videos, okay? Not everything you see online is actual, but anyone who's actually dealt with people that have had issues with being possessed has seen some incredible things. I've seen has seen things that are that cannot be explained except by these things, things that are supernatural, right? And, I'm, and again, I'm not talking about the fake stuff. I'm talking about things that are real. Any imam of any masjid actually has had people come into his office and has seen things uh, from people that are that are definitely supernatural and definitely people that are dealing with jinn. And then of course you talk to people that are actual raqis, you know, that actually try to extract jinn from people in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah and underline in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah because there's a lot of shady business that takes place there too and they've seen a lot of things so it's important for us to not deny everything that we've never actually dealt with or seen and at the same time not to exaggerate right I once had someone tell me that I think I'm possessed by a jinn I said why she said because when I read Quran I get sleepy I'm like that's that means you're human actually right that you know you get sleepy and you get tired as you read Quran right because if a person was truly possessed they would actually feel pain when they read Quran so yes yeah, sometimes jinn can possess people and in fact sometimes jinn can actually speak through human beings beings, right? And, and subhanAllah, it's a very frightening experience and you can, and, and people have experienced that. And the easiest way to get possessed, the easiest way to bring that into your life is to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you disobey Allah, particularly when you do something major, like leave off the prayer, uh, the ulama frequently associated a person leaving off prayer with jinn possession. Why? Because you remove the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from yourself. Or if you do the major sins, and particularly Allah mentioned, for example, one of the most disgusting sins, which is riba, which is usury. And I can tell you that I've rarely dealt with anyone that had that issue, except that they were dealing with a major sin, that they were you know, not praying, that they weren't coming to the masjid. The first time I actually saw them in the masjid was when a relative who does come to the masjid brought them and said, my cousin, my brother, my sister, so on and so forth is possessed by jinn, or someone that sells haram or so on and so forth. So that's the easiest way to have that happen to you, is to allow the protection of Allah to be removed from you by doing those things. And remember that when you do things that offend the angels, they leave you. And when the angels leave you, the shayateen come around. So if you're surrounding yourself by shayateen constantly and doing things that, that cause the angels to leave you, then what do you expect is going to happen to you? Now, if you're doing the things that you should be doing, you're fulfilling your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not engaging in those major sins, then there are a few things that you have to do. Number one, don't entertain shaytan's whispers. Don't entertain shaitan's whispers, whether they're about Allah, right? As we said earlier, that if he comes to you and starts telling you, you know, who created this, who created that, who created Allah, say, Amantu Billah. Affirm your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or if he tries to bring you harm through a bad dream, for example. You know, a lot of times people come to me and they want me to interpret their bad dreams. And I say, look, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when you see a bad dream, don't seek the interpretation of it. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Seek refuge in Allah from the Shaitan, the accursed devil. La tadurruk. It won't harm you. And don't go out and seek the interpretation. Khalas. You saw a bad dream. You saw a nightmare. You know, change your side as you're sleeping. Switch sides. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. And move on with your life. Or when Shaitan comes to you and makes you over question yourself. 
So waswasa, do I have wudu? People that I'll do wudu like five, six times or redo prayers because I think this might have been here, this might have been there. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you know, he taught us in many ahadith what became a principle in fiqh, al yaqeen, la yazulu bishak, that certainty is not removed by doubt no matter how strong the doubt is. Unless you've, you've seen something for sure that nullified your wudu, you're on your wudu, stick to your wudu. Or when he tries to discourage you from doing good, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, particularly in the context of da'wah, imma yanzaghannaka minash shaytani nazghun, when shaytan comes to you and he starts pestering you, fasta'id billah, seek refuge in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So don't give shaytan your attention in essence by letting him or letting those shayateen, letting those devils and letting those evil jinn whisper and showing them that you're entertaining those whispers. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu as is narrated in numerous narrations, that when Al-Mu'awwidatayn, when Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas were revealed, the Prophet Sallallahu he used those as ruqya, wa taraka ma siwa dhalik, he left other than that. So he just stuck to that. The Prophet Sallallahu used to read the last three Quls, he used to blow in his hand in the morning and in the evening, and he used to wipe those hands over his body as he was reading those three surahs Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the morning and the evening, and he taught us to do so. And that's a protection for you. The Prophet ﷺ also said what protects the home from shayateen is the recitation of Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah expels the devils from your home. It expels the shayateen uh, from your home. And that's both preventative and it's a cure. Okay, so it's better to do that before you have shayateen in your home, you have devils in your home, but it's also a cure. The Prophet ﷺ, he also mentioned to us, and this is probably the most effective treatment and the most effective way to, to avoid that happening to you, Ayat Al-Kursi. Okay, reciting Ayatul Kursi specifically from Surah Al-Baqarah. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who recites it in the morning will be protected in the evening, and the one who recites it in the evening will be protected until the morning. So recite it so that you can protect yourself. And lastly, you know, and this is not exclusive to anything that I've mentioned so far, but just tied into everything else. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that we already said when we were talking about divine decree, nothing can harm you except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, affirm that trust, do the things that He tells you to do, and know that if Allah gives you a cure, then that cure cannot coincide with the devil, that's, with the devil or with the disease that's given to you by a shaitan.